Do you have eyes? I mean, peacock eyes. Do you ever use them? Seems that these couple of barbs are kind of forgotten and that people are not using them. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use them and why. When I said these are not used, I'm sorry, but I was a little bit misleading here. Uh, they're not used as they are, like this. They're used stripped for like stripped peacock quill uh, because these are very white and kind of contrasty. They have dark and white side and people use them very often as a stripped quill, but they're not using them as they are with this shiny little barbels over here. That said, uh, I have to say that I was first in inspired by Wei Lu Allen to use these barbs. Uh, before that I was always using them as most people are. Uh, I would strip them, I would tie quiltigons or strip peacock quilt dry flies with CDC. Those are amazing also. Uh, but to use them as they are, especially this blue part which is beautiful, I was inspired by Wei Lu Allen. And just today I was, well, it's going to be a couple of days ago when you watch this video. Uh, I was watching uh, James Lund's channel on Instagram. It's called Once and Away. All together, Once and Away. It's one of my favorite tires. And he posted a really beautiful fly over there. So I was like, oh, this must be blue part from the barb. But I was wrong. I, I know now because I was texting with him a little bit. Uh, he used dyed peacock, but first impression I had was that it's this one so I got inspired and I tied this fly that I'm gonna show you in this video so I hope you will like it you will I hope you will enjoy it it's a very simple fly and it uses only four materials when we are with materials let's go into them so first of all I'm going to use a very simple hook it's a wet fly hook a traditional shape and this is size 14 so after the hook I will use this tinsel and I found it, uh, it was some do-it-yourself craft thing. So I just pulled out one strand and I got beautiful gold tinsel. For the body, I will use peacock eye, beautiful material. And I will use one of these blue barbs, as you can see them. For the hackle, I'll use Whitening Farms, uh, wet fly uh, cape in grizzly color. It's just universal, it cannot be more universal than this, I think. And that's all. Uh, thread, thread-wise, yeah, that's the last one. For the thread, I'm using Semperfly Nano Silk in 30 denier, and it's beautiful. Uh, this one is in olive color. I'm just kind of matching everything, but it's not important as long as it, it is dark. I was thinking maybe blue would match body, but I don't have blue. blue. So let's start tying this fly. I'm gonna begin with the hook in the vise. Before I put it in the vise, I'm, I want to break the barb, so I deep barb the hook. Because I'm using, as I said, Semperfly Nano Silk, I need to use, wax the thread a little bit. So I'm just going to run it through the beeswax, like so, and make it kind of uh, more sticky. Actually, I'm just increasing friction between hook and the thread. At any point, you can cut the excess of the thread and proceed. Now, I want to cover most of the body with the thread. Kind of sometimes counter twist the bobbin, bobbin holder to flatten the thread so you have thinner base to work with. And before I come to the end of the hook, I want to more or less on the top of the hook or a little bit wherever it's not important basically but I want to put the tinsel there cover it again with flat thread making a very smooth and flat foundation for what's to come and I want the tag to be quite prominent and visible to the fish and to me so I'll take maybe one third of the overall shank uh, to occupy with the tinsel here Next step is to choose a barb. And for the barb, I'm going to use. You can either choose uh, right or left side of the bird. So 
when the bird is facing you so you're facing the same direction as the bird my right it's the opposite when looking look at the screen so birds right or my my right are the same so it's when it's facing the, the the this face of the feather is facing away from me now that's how you look which side are you going to use uh, they are not the same so if you pick the, the barbs from both sides they are not the same because those barbules that are coming off the barbs are not the same length from each side because let me see if I can show it to you in the video but I can certainly show you with a photo so as you can maybe see it here now it's like a T and one side is a bit longer and you want that side to show up more I mean it's okay if you use any of these sides but but yeah it makes sense to use that one so because I will put this longer barbules towards the bottom so when I start wrapping they will stick out of the hook let me show you that so first of all I want to prepare this so I'm just gonna strip those barbules off the barb and then kind of counterspin the bobbin holder a little bit and cover the body here now as you will see I will start with bare barb here that's why I stripped it so my first strap can go perpendicular those barbules will go perpendicular perpendicular to the hook shank now I'll go without overlapping here so I'm leaving quite a bit of space in between those wraps and then I'll cover the shank it's quite simple fly we'll see okay now look at this there is a little kind of like a gate here here okay there is a gate so kind of a entrance for the tinsel that's where I want to lead my tinsel in uh, I don't want to uh, I don't want to break or mat down any of these barbules so I'll just go slowly with this and when I reach that point here you will see I'll just slide the tinsel in and slowly go in between those wraps trying not to break and mat down those barbules and as you can see it's quite easy to do you may need one or two flies to get accustomed to do this but it's not so difficult okay now cutting says and there is a beautiful body. Now, if you noticed, uh, there was a bare uh, pico quill, and I covered it with tinsel, and that's kind of protecting the t the, the whole body, overall body. I was trying to scrub it with uh, scissor tips, and it was quite quite resistant to this. So I assume it's going to be pretty resistant to trout's teeth. I mean, considering that it's quite easy tie to fly, I'm not very concerned. But I do like durable flies. Now it's time to pick up the feather. I'll just pick one of those uh, feathers from the middle. I will probably I just eyeball it, or you can use this kind of measure it and see if the size is good. I like longer. So I'll go with the first one. I like longer legs because they are a little bit more wiggly in the water. No, I'll just skip this lower part of the feather. The rachis is more thicker. It's unpredictable because it's, it has almost round shape. So I want to go into this upper section here where the rachis is more uh, ovoid, kind of flattened shape. And I'll just cut there or break it it's the same but then I want to remove a couple of those barbs and have some bare rakes to start with 
Now, counter spin the bobbin holder to make thread jump into your fingers and put this feather like this. So the flat side of the rake is, is getting onto the hook. And your first wrap is going to be proper one, you will see. So I'm going backwards with the thread. This is additionally securing the tinsel because I just secured tinsel with a couple of wraps. It's also securing the, uh, the feather. And now I can just go in one, two turns, so I can go back. Now look at this, just wrap the feather nicely. I can do it even with my hands, as you can see. That's why I like those genetic wet feathers. It's not as short as a partridge. And I think this is plenty. What is this, like two wraps? Two, pull back a little bit. One, two, oops. I think the eye got my, got my thread broken. Well, I'm gonna try and save the fly. I'm gonna put some wax to prevent slippage. And then I'll just try to save everything. There is no loose end of this thread, so I'll just go cover it and see what I can do. If not, if I'm not satisfied, I'm just gonna tie the fly from the beginning, more, more or less. Okay, pull it back, form a little head here. Okay, this seems okay. Okay. Now with flat thread, so you need to counter spin the bobbin holder again. I'll make a little head over here. And the second knot, I'll just again use the beeswax. It makes it a little bit more secure. So one, two, three, four. I have a nice neat little head, even though I used two knots. So this fly should be saved, but it's okay. Sometimes this happens, it's not a big deal. So guys, what do you think? Do you like this kind of body material? What do you think? Do you see any fish rising to it? Uh, I've been using this for nymphs and rice, uh, and it was good. I love it. I mean, you can't go wrong with peacock. And I have been using blue bodies for perdigons before, and for some dry flies, f, f fly. Uh, it's very good for the for grayling. So I'm sure that this wet fly will be a very successful one too. So thank you very much for watching. Be safe and tight tight lines.